New Testament reading today comes from James. A little something a little different. We don't spend a lot of time in James. We should. A lot to learn from James. But we're going to hear a little bit more about prayer. This is James 5, verses 13 through 17. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. <coughs> May God add his blessing to our hearing and understanding of his holy word. Let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and our minds to hear and to understand your holy word and to feel the blessings that you have placed in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mark 1, 35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 6, 12 says, One of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. Luke 5, 16 tells us that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Matthew 26, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And then Matthew tells us he went away a second time and prayed. We hear in Matthew 14, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And Luke 11 tells us, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus did just that. Jesus prayed. He taught the disciples to pray. He teaches us to pray. Because prayer in life is a necessity. It is an, as important as the air we breathe. Now I read for you a passage from James about prayer. James was the brother of Jesus. He was a leader in the Jerusalem church. And the reading that we heard is part of James a letter that he wrote for Jewish Christians who were living in Gentile communities around Judea. He wrote, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone among you sick? Call the elders of the church to pray over them. Prayer offered in faith will heal them. The Lord will raise them up. In other words, you must truly believe in the prayer that you are praying. James tells us about Elijah, a human being. He prayed for no rain. It didn't rain for three and a half years. He prayed for rain. It rained and the crops grew. The power of prayer. Because prayer is faith in action. And prayer offered in faith means believing in the power of God. Prayer is powerful. It can be done alone. It can be done together. It can be for others. It can be for yourself. And James writes this to these, this group of people because he has concern for them as Christians because they're being persecuted. And so he teaches them about having genuine faith. He says that sins will be forgiven. So he writes, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful 
and effective. Confess your sins to each other. All right, who wants to go first? <laughs> but James is telling us that we need to do that so we know what we're praying for each other so we can bring about the healing. Most of the times we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness in private. But praying together brings closeness and healing in community. And one of the greatest things that God has supplied you with is the power of prayer. The ability to call on God whenever and wherever you want. So how do we do it? How do we pray? Is there a right way, a wrong way? How should we pray? When should we pray? Why should we pray? What should we pray for? There's a lot of questions that come with prayer. So I'm going to share with you today a few ways that you can go about praying. There's a lot of ways. I'm going to share a few. A few different ways that you can talk to God. You don't have to use big, fancy, theological words. The only thing God asks is that you just be yourself. Because he already loves that. So here's the first way. You can pray through contemplation. Contemplation means looking at something thoughtfully. Focusing on it. Deep, reflective thought. And Psalm 119 tells us, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. So as we read scripture, as we think about it, study it, and sit with it, and we ask ourselves, how does this apply to me today? Because it always does. It's not just a history book. It applies. How do I use that scripture in my life right now? Might be something that we talk together. Yeah. Might be something you talk with your friend about. But it can also be something that you yeah. take to God. And you talk to God about. Asking God, what do you want me to hear from this passage today? What do you want me to do about this problem in my life today? Contemplate, ask, and listen. Don't hand God your grocery list of requests and then shut the prayer down. Give God time to contemplate with you. Sit in silence and listen. The second way to pray is through confession and repentance. 1 John 1 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Life is messy. It causes us to do and say things that we wish we hadn't done. It causes us to sin. And Jesus gives us forgiveness. He offers us the cleansing and the renewal that we need to carry on. And he offers that to us through prayer of confession and prayers of repentance, of bringing those sins to him. That's often not the prayer we want to pray, but it's the prayer that we need to pray. Now, another way of praying is through rejoicing. 1 Samuel 2 tells us, My heart rejoices in the Lord, and the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. Life is joyful. Prayer can be joyful. We need to celebrate God's generosity to us and to others. We need to celebrate the good news that God brings to us. And what a better way to show our gratitude and our thanksgiving to God than through a joyful prayer, telling him how grateful we are. God does want you to be happy. That's the ultimate goal. But along with those joyful days are days that are not so great. Days when we face suffering and sadness. We face pain, emotional and physical. And in those times, there's another way to pray for, to God. To actually cry out to God. Psalm 102 says, Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. 
Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me. When I call, answer me quickly. Mm. Answer me quickly. I prayed that one. Sometimes the difficult days are the easiest days for us to cry out to God, to be in prayer. But when you hurt, you also have the opportunity to go much deeper in your relationship with God. He doesn't want you to hurt, but he wants the closeness with you. But it can also be the time when it feels like God isn't listening, that God is, that God is hiding from you, that he is not going to answer your prayers. But in fact, those are our human ways of blocking God. Our human ways of staying within ourselves instead of handing it all over to God. Because God doesn't hide from you. God doesn't leave you. God does want to answer your prayers. And in fact, he wants to take you to that place of joyful, rejoicing prayer once again. Another way that we can pray is through petition. In our prayers, we can ask God for things. Now, I don't mean ask God to help you win the lottery or to put a fancy new sports car in your driveway when you wake up in the morning. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you need a new car, you might pray for the knowledge to know how to help yourself be able to have reliable transportation. You're praying for the knowledge, for the ability to help yourself. We can pray by petition, by asking. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And God gives us what's best for us according to his will, his plan, his timing. We ask God for healing and wisdom and salvation. The list goes on and on. And then we must have true faith and trust and belief in God and in that prayer. And then sometimes that requires waiting and waiting and waiting. You're waiting with God. Yeah, there's another way to pray. You can pray like Jesus. We know that prayer. We can always pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. In Matthew 6, 9, Jesus says, And when you pray, Jesus said, When you pray, sounds like he's expecting you to pray. He says, This is how you should pray. Our Father, the prayer becomes communal. We invite others. In heaven, we're recognizing that majestic place where God is, the place of heaven. Hallowed would be your name. We show God that we are in awe of his holiness. We are loving his holiness. We are amazed by his holiness. Your kingdom come, we recognize God's kingdom. The world is his, it is not ours. It belongs to him. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are seeking God's will, not our own earthly ways, but God's will. Give us today our daily bread. We're request, requesting just what we need for today. Not for the whole month or the whole year, just for today. And we are recognizing who provides. And forgive us our debts. Well, we're asking for forgiveness, no doubt. We're asking for forgiveness for our mistakes and our sins. As we also have forgiven our debtors. We can't just glaze over that. Because we are to forgive others. And we are to forgive others first before asking God for our own forgiveness. Forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Sometimes we have to make that first move. 
And lead us not into temptation. God does not lead us into times of temptation, but we often find ourselves there. And so we ask for protection to lead us in the way that God wants us to go. But deliver us from the evil one. We are asking for God's protection over evil. Now this prayer sounds a little bit different than how we say it today, but it's the same prayer. It is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. It is a prayer that when you don't know what to pray or how to pray, that you can go to in any circumstance and pray that prayer. You can even say it with another prayer. It is a beautiful prayer and it is a gift from Jesus. It is the prayer that Jesus prayed. The perfect prayer. I'm going to share one more way with you of how you can pray, and that is praying spontaneously. Praying spontaneously. Be spontaneous. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, pray continually. You don't always have to be on your knees. You don't always have to be in your favorite prayer spot or be at church. You don't always have to be with others. You can pray anywhere. Anytime you feel the need, you can pray. You can pray in your car at a red light. Do not close your eyes and take your hands off the wheel. But you can pray. You can pray anytime you want. You can pray any way you want. You can contemplate. You can confess and repent. You can rejoice. You can cry out. You can pray a prayer of petition. You can pray like Jesus taught you to pray. But just pray. Be spontaneous. And before long, you're going to find yourself praying all day long. And God's okay with that. He's not too busy. He's a big God. He can handle wherever you are and need to talk to him. He can handle whatever you bring to him. There's a story about a group of professors. They were invited on a plane. And the professors get on the plane, they sit down, they shut the door, and the plane's preparing to take off. And they tell the professors, this plane was built by your students. <laughs> and so the professors get up, and they're going to head for the door. They are getting off that plane, except for one. And he sat back all calm, cool, and collected, not anxious at all. And one of them said to him, why are you not trying to get off the plane? And he said, well, there are our students. And he said, are you sure you taught them well? And he said, I'm sure this plane won't fly. <laughs> now, I wonder sometimes if that's not how God thinks about us. You know, if God was being interviewed and he said, you know, someone asked God and said, you know, well, tell me about your children. Do, do they pray? And he might say, you know, well, you know. I taught them to pray. I sent my son to show them how. It was necessary for him. They should know it's necessary for them. I want to talk to them, to help them, to rejoice with them. But they still try and suffer alone. They still rejoice without me. They face daily struggles when I can lead them right to the answer they're looking for. They say they'll pray, but you know, they just, they don't. I miss them. I want to talk to them. When you see a post on social media and someone asks you for prayer and you reply, sending prayers, do you stop right then and pray? Do you add it to a list of prayers for later? Or do you just keep scrolling after you're tired? When our church family sends out a message on our message board about someone needing prayer, do you stop right then after you say sending prayers and send those prayers to God. Because if you're not doing that, I encourage you to make that change. To stop everything and offer that prayer in your strong faith and belief, lift it up to God for those people. 
If you're not spending time with God every day at some point in prayer, I encourage you to make that change today. To talk to God every day. Because here's the thing we forget. Your prayers are part of the process of God's big plan. Amen. And now, let us do just that. Let us be together in prayer. We're going to begin with a few moments of silent prayer before we go into our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you are our life, you are the air we breathe, and the beat of our hearts. You have created us in your image to be as you want us to be. What an amazing gift you have given to us, a gift unlike any other, a gift that will stand the test of time. Lord, we come today asking for prayers of healing from the tragic accident that happened within our community. We ask that you supply the care and love that the families and friends of those involved need and desire. We pray for healing for a life loss and for the pain and suffering of those who lost a family member, a friend, a colleague, and the community left behind. May all find the comfort and support in your presence that is needed in this time. We pray for those who were directly involved. We pray for those who were there, whose eyes were witness to this tragedy whose hearts are crying out to you for help. We lift up to you the many lives touched by this loss. But we also come this, Lord, this morning, Lord, to celebrate the strength of some of our own. We have asked you to walk with Jane and Paul as they journeyed through unknown territory, through times that seemed like an uphill climb, but now are being achieved and celebrated. Our Heavenly Father, you have answered our prayers through the strength and the courage that these two have embraced through their journey. Through them, your spirit not only fills them, but fills each one of us. We celebrate the faith and the love that our own disciple Stephen faced in the time of need for a friend. The time when he was called to go forth and be the disciple that you are calling him to be. To offer love and comfort, healing and promise to one in need of your word. Lord, we lift this church family up to you with gratitude and thanksgiving. When one of us hurts, we all hurt. When one of us is called to help another, we all walk with them. You have brought us together, and we pray that we will all walk humbly in your footsteps and be your light in the world to one another and to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 